OK, so our question is, how can we turn this giant molecular cloud, you know, several light years big, but containing all the right elements, into something incredibly small, only maybe 10 to the 12 metres across. We're going from 10 to the 17 metres to 10 to the 12. Yeah, there's a lot of change that has to go through. So where is this all going? How is, that, how is yeah. this going to happen? So basically, this is shrinking something about a million times. OK. So it's like shrinking you to the size that's smaller than a grain of dust. And that's going to be painful. Right. Painful? i will be pretty dense grain of dust, but it'd be painful. Yeah, so I mean, this is not to scale. Yep. To scale, it'd be far, far, far smaller, like a it's thousand times not even smaller visible. than a pixel. Yeah. So, um, but why does it go to a disk rather than just all falling into a star? I mean, what's going to yep. happen is that the outer regions are going to be attracted by the gravity of the middle, so they'll want to move in. Yep. So why don't they all just move in and form a star? Well, this is a good question because there, we, we do know this is what happens. We can see it. But there's also another key thing that we have to think about, and is these things are spinning. That's right. So the law of physics we're going to have to worry about here is called the law of conservation of angular momentum. Angular momentum is the sort of momentum you get from something spinning. Yep. It depends on how far something is spinning and how far out it is. So, I mean, you could do this right at home, right? You're spinning around in a desk chair or you're at work and maybe a little bit bored. Maybe you're watching this right now. If you spin around, you can actually change your speed depending on how you move your body. So basically, if something is spinning slowly but a long way out, it has a lot of angular momentum. If it's got to move in, it's got to spin faster. It has to conserve angular that momentum. momentum. Is, angular momentum is spin and times distance, if you like. So a small amount of stuff spinning slowly a long way out is equivalent to a large amount of stuff spinning fast close in. So let's try a demonstration of this. We happen to have an office chair right here. Right? OK. So what we're going to do with Brad is I'm going to spin him. And he's going to stick his arms and legs out and try not to knock the screen and the camera and everything else. And then he's going to, tr so at the moment, his mass is going to be a long way out. I'm a really big molecular cloud yeah. right now. And then we're going to shrink it down by bringing your arms and legs in. OK. And we're going to see what happens to how fast you spin. OK, all right. OK, so let's get you going here. OK, now bring it in. Oops. <laughs> but I've already stopped. Yes, OK. Let's, OK, bring it in faster and bring it out again. OK. So as I moved my arms and legs out, pretty immediately I slowed down. That's and right. as soon as I brought them in, I was pretty fast relative to how much I was expecting to. Yes. And in your case, most of your mass, like most of my mass, is not in your arms and legs. It's, <laughs> it's in your body. And so your uh, amount of mass you're bringing in is only a small fraction of your total mass, but still it can make a big difference to your speed. So if I had... And you weren't shrinking it by a factor of a million. That's right. So if I had a lot of extra weight, you know, imagine I had some huge weights on my arms and legs and really brought them in really tight, I would go much, much, much faster. Classic example is the, uh, of someone uh, on ice skates spinning yes. around and bringing their arms and legs in. So what this means is that if, if, if this cloud was spinning to begin with, yep. even by the smallest amount, yep. as it gets smaller and smaller, it's going to have to spin faster That's and faster. Fast. And, and so eventually it'll be spinning so fast it can't shrink anymore because the centrifugal force will fight off the gravity. So what happens? So you're going to end up with a spinning disk. Ah, OK. So, so, that's... so you have to end up with a disk. You can't go all the way just to a star unless it wasn't spinning at all to begin with. So the fact is that we know these things are generally spinning at least a little bit. Well, you've got to ask, why, why would something be spinning? And this cloud of gas was created by supernova yep. and other winds being blown out. And it's all going to be swirling around in some random chaotic pattern. And it would be an incredible coincidence of that random pattern. Some of it's going to be going this way, some of that way. And maybe it was exactly the same amounts going one way and the other. Odds are it's going to be a bit more stuff going one way than the other. So it'll have some net spin. And we don't need it, as you said, a lot, right? Because this thing is so gigantic, you only need a little bit of a difference to yeah. create just enough spin that when you shrink it a one million times. One part in a million motion more in one direction than the other will give you the spin you need. Yep. And you have to bear in mind that everything in the universe that we know about is spinning. I mean, this is in the galaxy, which is spinning. Yep. Um, so it would be absolutely incredible if you managed to create a cloud of gas by firing random supernovae and stellar winds, and it exactly was at a spin of exactly zero. And it might be a spin of 0.01 or 0.03 or something, not exactly zero, pretty close. Yep. But it doesn't matter how small it is. By the time you shrunk it a million times, that spin is going to get a million times faster. And, and it was kind of what we were talking about also with the, uh, the, the idea of having a nearby star. You'd also have to have every molecular cloud perfectly not spinning in this right balance, which isn't just going to happen. Yes. Now, you can actually simulate this. 
And so here are some simulations. They've given a cloud of gas some random motions to begin with. Yep. And the random motions are not quite perfectly lined up to give you zero angular momentum and it'd be almost impossible to make it like that. So, so they're all going in essentially different directions. Yeah. So now we're zooming in and rotating it around and keep looking at what's happening. And what you actually see is it's not one giant molecular cloud turns into one spinning disk of gas. Yep. What actually happens is that you form lots of stars out of one cloud. Yep. And, and, and stars... we saw that in the, the photo just before. That's right. So you're going to get one molecular cloud like Orion and as it'll shrink, um, the simulation suggests that actually each dot here is a star. Okay. It'll form lots and lots of different stars, each of which uh, has got its angular momentum problem. Some of them will end up as binary stars, some will end up with spinning disks and of as, gas. And as we pile more gas, we're creating we'll more stars. You'll start to see some spinning disks of gas around here. And, but this would also then explain why every star is not spinning the same, right? Because it depends on how much they've compressed. That's right. Um, here's another simulation. Um, this is a more realistic simulation which includes some sort of feedback mechanisms. We talked about this in the STARS course. And once again, you see that a giant molecular cloud is a chaotic, lumpy, blobby place, and it's going to form lots of different stars. And each one. You can one... start to see a few of them popping out. And as each one forms, they're going to have spinning gas coming in to shrink towards them, which is going to give you uh, these protoplanetary disks around them. And this is, you know, this gas cloud isn't spinning, as you said, that fast. I mean, you, you can tell it's moving, but not a lot. But as you start to get these concentrated areas, you can quite see the speed picks up. That's right. So here's a zoom into one of these simulated clouds okay. as you see it forming. And what you can see is that where you get these filaments of gas funneling down and you get spiral patterns uh, in the middle of these things as the angular momentum they shrink and shrink and shrink, and eventually they'll stop shrinking because the angular momentum causes centrifugal force to balance gravity. And then yeah. we have our disk. Yeah. And here we can zoom in on one of these clumps, and you can see the whole thing spinning. Originally, it was probably spinning much more slowly, but already it shrunk down by like 100,000 times. And right in the middle, you can see it. It's now causing things are really rotating very fast. And as we zoom in, we'll start seeing a star forming, yep. and we'll see this disk of gas around it. Swirling around. Now, how long does this whole process take place? This takes maybe hundreds of thousands to a million of years, which sounds like quite a long time. He is now, now looking at the protoplanetary disk forming. With this, A lot of the gas has gone to the sun in the middle, but you see it become rather unstable and yep. waves move around. And, and that wave, again, is stuff from that gas cloud made of the same stuff the sun is that is being pushed out around. And you get some blobs forming on the outside, which might even be where planets form and around the central sun. But basically, we've, we've kind of said that in the solar system, the planets are irrelevant. They've got almost no mass. Yeah. What they do have is most of the angular momentum. Oh, so what you're saying is that the planet should spin a lot more than the sun? The motion of the planets around the sun contains most of the angular momentum, just because uh, they're a long way out. The sun itself spins. Yep. But that's because it's such a small radius, it doesn't have much angular momentum. But, so in our solar system, you have the mass, 99.9% .9 in the sun, heat, 99.9% in the sun. But angular momentum, most of it's in Jupiter. Oh, OK, because it is really far out, has a sideways motion, decent sideways motion. And as it goes around the sun, it has en enough energy or enough angular momentum to make it all the way around, which has to be quite a lot more compared to the relative small size of the sun at this scale. Yeah, so it looks like we're going to need to have the spinning disk of gas just to put the angular momentum somewhere. Okay.